Hello and welcome to the Socrato TV, where wisdom meets reality. I am your host Socrato and I'm welcoming you to this conversation where we discuss politics, economics and social issues in the Republic of Kenya. Today we will be speaking about the unprecedented uh, strengthening of the dollar, of the Kenyan shilling I mean, against the dollar. And I will explain the reasons why uh, the dollar uh, again a ceiling is reducing its value and I will also try to put into perspective the interconnection between this and the economy of Kenya. So if you are new to our channel please feel free to subscribe so that you can continue getting analysis of this kind. Even before we go further let's listen to the president of the Republic of Kenya a few months ago when he was talking about uh, the situation of the dollar in Kenya. Economic uh, advisor David Ndi, Mohammed Hassan, Davis Chirchir, and the young man at EPRA. Those four gentlemen have done something phenomenal in our country. They have managed to put together a program that has taken us away from looking for $500 million every month to, to buy our fuel needs, which was slowly snowballing into a crisis. Today, as a country, we can buy fuel in Kenya shillings, something that many people never thought it would be possible. Again, I want to commend uh, these good people. And let me tell you that from this month of April, all our um, fuel marketers, and all the people in that space, they will be able to buy our products, fuel products, in Kenya shillings. And it will remove pressure on our dollars. In fact, in the next one month or so, you will see dollars coming down, the, uh, the, the exchange rate coming down in a very phenomenal way. In fact, in my estimation, in the next couple of months, the dollars will come, the exchange rate will come below 120 shillings. Maybe 115, you never know. So, and, and these are... Unfortunately, the prediction by the president did not come to pass. In fact, the opposite happened. And the dollar, again, a shilling has been gaining or strengthening every day, whereby the Kenyan shilling has been depreciating. And at its worst, it, uh, it had reached up uh, around 167. And some people even predicted that uh, it was... It was to reach 200 shilling, whereby one dollar, the value of one dollar again a scan and shilling, was expected to be 200 shillings. But currently, that seemingly will not happen. Uh, this was an expert who was speaking uh, the period when Kenyans there was an outburst in Kenya uh, regarding the drop of the value of the Kenyan shilling. After COVID, there was high inflation and all the central banks used the monetary policy to increase the interest rates. Unfortunately, Kenya didn't follow that route. They increased their rates from only 7 to 9.5% and to 10 to 10.5% when the new governor came here on board. So that is what has caused our Kenya shilling to crash. At the same time, the lack of cohesion between the national treasury... Now, having listened to the expert and the sentiments of the president of the Republic of Kenya, uh, I would like now to dive into the main agenda of this video. And just a disclaimer, I am not a financial expert, but just a knowledgeable Kenyan who understands uh, a lot of things. So uh, do not use the information here as your financial advice. If you need financial advice, go to a financial expert to educate you on that. Now, the first reason why the dollar or the Kenyan shilling is strengthening 
is because of the increase in the interest rates by the Central Bank of Kenya. And how do increase of interest affect or improve uh, the value of the Kenyan shilling or any, any currency? One, by increasing the value, the, 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 the interest rates, people who are borrowing money from the bank are debtored, that is they are prevented to, to borrow a lot of money, while those who want to, to keep money are motivated. Why? If you have a given amount of money and you, you are sure that by uh, going to, to bank the amount of money you will get high interest, you are motivated to, to do so. But if you know by borrowing the amount of money, the same high interest rate will apply to you, you are prevented, you are curbed away from borrowing the money. So other people from other countries will also want to come and bank with Kenya because they believe that because of this high interest rates, they will get a higher uh, extra of amount of money from what they will have kept. And in that, the, for, the, the reserves, that is the foreign reserve of Kenya increases. That is the amount of money uh, that is in the Kenyan, uh, the Central Bank of Kenya increases. So in itself, uh, the value of the Kenyan shilling also gains or increases automatically. But Remember, that has also an advantage and it has a disadvantage. Disadvantage is that it is preventing people to borrow money to do business. So people uh, are prevent, will, will, will fear, mostly Kenyans will fear to borrow money because uh, they believe they will have to pay higher interest rates. But the advantage or the advantageous part is that now foreigners will bring foreign reserve into the Central Bank of Kenya, which will only improve or strengthen the value of uh, the Kenyan shilling. The second reason why the Kenyan shilling is strengthening is because recently we have seen Dr. William Samuel Ruto going to uh, foreign lines, that is a meeting with uh, IMF and other uh, world lenders to borrow an amount of money uh, for uh, the projects which although we don't see them and he has also received grants so d d this brings or increases the foreign reserve of kenya that is of the central bank so if the foreign reserve foreign reserve is just simply how much the amount of do amount of dollars that kenya has so if kenya has more amount of dollars in their reserve it means uh, they do not need more dollars that is if you have more dollars in your reserve, it means at least you read a relatively uh, less amount of dollars. If you have zero amount of dollars in your reserve, then you are in a danger because uh, the ceiling will depreciate very, very, very steeply. Uh, so to try and uh, explain that point, the fact that now this man money that is borrowed from other countries comes in form of dollars, stored in Kenya of uh, reserve, then Kenya will not be in dire need of the dollars. So in the process, the shilling will strengthen or increase its value. The other reason, although it is far-fetched, is the fact that China, which is one of the countries that celebrate, that, that, that usually does business a lot of business in Kenya is currently having a New Year celebration in their country. So while they are celebrating, they are not so much uh, doing business. So that reduces the need or the the need for people to get dollars. So people don't want dollars more so to, uh, to do with between Kenya and and uh, the business between Kenya and China is currently very low. And business between Kenya and China usually involves dollars. So since the business between Kenya and China is not at its peak or its low because they are celebrating and not so much in business, 
the demand on the dollar is reducing so the fact that this demand has reduced then it strengthens it brings some strengthening effect on the kenyan shilling so this means that if uh, after this celebration have resumed and, and then the demand of the dollar will increase likely uh, we expect there will be a change although we cannot uh, d be definite and say that the change will either mean that uh, the, the Kenyan shilling will continue depreciating. Remember, the main reason I said is that the increase in the interest rate is what has uh, made uh, the dollar to appear like it is depreciating. Now, the second part of this discussion is to s explain why this does not mean that the economy of Kenya is improving. There are other metrics or other measures we use when we are measuring how the economy is improving. And one of them is the gross domestic uh, GDP. And the, the other one is the, uh, the unemployment rate in the country. The other one is the poverty levels. Uh, and the last one is debt sustainability, how uh, a country is able to pay its debt. And I think the, the, I had forgotten this one, fiscal de deficit. Now, I'll explain all this. The first one, which I said is the uh, GDP, is refers just to the amount of money that Kenya gets from the tra uh, it trading with other countries outside. For example, if you sell coffee, if you sell uh, tea, you sell whatever you sell, then what you buy from the other countries. So when you take the total amount of money that you get from selling uh, these items or these crops, or if you have minerals, that's the reason why countries with oil are very rich because they sell a lot. And remember, oil is very expensive. So if you sell a lot of things, then your GDP is increases but if you do not sell a lot of things it reduces so that is a very good metric of measuring economy the other metric i said is poverty level poverty level is refers to how how many people in your country are able to take care of of the basic amenities which is usually referred by the world bank as living below one dollar so if people are able to take care of all the of if all people in your country are able to take care of all their basic needs, then of course your economy is doing well. But if whether your currency is strengthening, but very many people in your country are not able to take uh, care of their basic necessities like shelter, food, clothing, uh, of course your economy is not doing great. Another thing I said was the debt sustainability how able is your government or your country to pay back the debts that they took if your country has taken very huge debts it reduces the its ability to pay back the debts so it makes their debts it reduces or minimizes their debt sustainability and of course kenyans has a lot of debts so it, it is very it's really struggling to pay back so we cannot say that it's the economy is doing well. Another thing uh, which I said is the uh, I say the fiscal uh, the fiscal deficit just refers to the amount of money you are using against what you have. Now, if you look at the budget of Kenya, uh, uh, the budget is usually the estimated amount of money that the country intends to use during that period of time. So if the budget is higher than the amount of money that the country has, it means they will be forced to borrow. So by borrowing, uh, uh, the country will have to, it, it, it increases the fiscal deficit whereby uh, the amount of expenditure or the amount of money they are using is more than what they have. So they are living beyond their means. So that in itself means you are your economy is not doing great so i think 
uh, those are the good measures or metrics we can use to see whether the economy of a given country is doing well. And just to uh, finish this, increasing the interest rates, which is, I said, is the main reason why the Kenyan shilling is gaining value, attracts investors. We, it's done to, to attract investors so that at the end, these investors will help to improve the economy. So it is like an incentive, but in itself is not a measure of uh, the economy improving. So that is my opinion and uh, uh, my take on the increasing or uh, the strengthening of the Kenyan shilling. I hope it will continue improving and will in, uh, attract more investors in Kenya so that we can enhance our economy. Thank you so much for listening to us. Until we meet again, bye-bye.